Amen. So Lamentations chapter 3, I'm going to read it. If you have a Bible, like I said, Lamentations 3, 21 to 24. And this is what it says. This is what it says. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. And then he goes on, look at it, verse 22. Look at what Jeremiah wrote. He says what? It is, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, that we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And then verse 24 says, The Lord is my portion, save my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Beautiful passage. Especially when you consider this, the situation in which Jeremiah found himself and wrote this. This passage that we just read is about faith and hope. Faith is a close relative of hope. Faith is the oil, the engine that keeps hope going. Faith is uh, the oxygen that keeps hope alive. All of us here, we have hope for something. We have hope for certain things in our lives. I hope, you know, we, we're hoping that things will work out well for our future, for our family, for our country. We hope, we hope, we hope. And we, like I said, for the believer, hope is the confident expectation that God will do what God has said he will do. And so for us, hope is not a wish. So while faith accepts, hope expects. You see, that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, well, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And in Lamentations right here, in Lamentations 3, 21, 24, the prophet Jeremiah remembers something that triggered hope in him, or hope within him. And that's why he said in Lamentations 3, verse 21, this I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. I remember something. What did he recall? Look at it. He looked at it and verse 22 says what? He recalled that it is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed because his compassions fail not. That's what he recalled. He, re he looked back and then he realized that, uh, you know, the people of Israel were evil and wicked and, and, and God had every right to destroy them. But God didn't do that. What, what, rather, uh, rather, he saw the mercies and compassion of God every morning when they deserved judgment. And today, when we look at our countries where we live, we see the kind of uh, uh, legislation that is being that, that is being passed, the gender agenda, the evil, the corruption go around the world. The, every country so much corruption that people are dying just because of uh, leaders who are corrupt. And yes, so God hasn't destroyed the people, right? You know, and so you look back and you realize God is a God of patience, long suffering. And so Jeremiah looked back and he saw. Mm, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope that uh, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. See, this was one of the things that Jeremiah remembered. And you and I this morning, I, will, I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through today, just look back yesterday, look at your life, and you know you messed up, up and down, left and right, you know, in and out, but God has been gracious, and God has granted you another day for you to 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 to, 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 what, to remedy the, the behavior, the wrong behavior, the wrong attitude that we have. So Jeremiah looked back and saw them with this marvelous hope and uh, the sense of twins of heart and soul, faith and hope, and God's grace and mercy. Jeremiah realized right away that, yes, God is in the house, and when God is in control, everything goes out real well. So we turn to this faith. It is, it is, it is by God's grace that we are not consumed. With this marvelous hope and expression of faith in the unfailing mercies of God, Jeremiah looked to the distant future with renewed hope. And I'm encouraging you this morning, that, like I said, doesn't matter where you live, and this morning look into the future with renewed hope. That's what the, that's what the passage right here, Lamentation 3, 21, 24, is encouraging you and I to do. Look into the future with hope, with renewed hope. And then look at it again. Look at it. He also remembers something else. Verse 23. 
He remembered that uh, uh, God's compassion, they fell now, they are new every morning. And then he says what? And then he worshiped God and said, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. And then verse 24, he goes on to say, well, the Lord is my portion. Nothing else, nothing else, nobody else, but the Lord is my portion. Save my soul. From within him, he, he began to worship and praise God. Huh? He said, great is your faithfulness. You are my portion. Uh, you know, my hope is in you. But what, what, brought, what, what brought about all this? Israel was in sin. Judah was in sin. And about to fall to the Babylonians. The Babylonian empire was about to, was about to raise Judah. The people uh, were wicked. Jeremiah anchored his hope in God. You see, uh, they've been preaching. Jeremiah and other prophets have been preaching to the people. Mend your ways. Change your ways. Mend your ways. Remove, move away from sin. Just like today we preach the word of God and we, and we tell people, move away from sin. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, can, we, you know, we tell people to what to drop the lifestyle of sin and embrace God, but it's all falling on God. Uh, uh, it seems to be falling on deaf ears, right? So it's the same thing was happening to uh, in Jeremiah's time. And so when he looked back, he realized that God had every right to destroy all of them, but God didn't do so. So look at it. It's morning when you wake up. No matter how terrible things were the day before or how insecure life seems to be, each dawning day, each sunrise gives you and I hope in fresh mercies, new mercies and, 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 and new compassions from God. Every morning when we wake up, we, we go to bed not knowing what's going to happen, huh? but God wakes us up in the morning. So he says, so every morning we, have, we, we, we receive fresh mercies and compassions from God. We all need a constant supply and, and God has promised to send them without fail. God has promised to send what? his compassions and his mercies to you and to me without fail every day. No matter how bad Canada is, no matter how well you live your country, no matter how bad it is, God's people like you and I, we can look to each new morning with renewed vigor in faith and hope. We can do that. God is a God of judgment, but he's also a God of grace and mercy. The twins I talked about. And wherever God lives life, he lives hope. You see, wherever there's, wherever God lives life, there's hope. That is why, that's why we say, you know, when somebody's sick in the hospital and the doctor comes to say, well, you know what, we want to pull the plug. We say, no. We say, no. Why? Because we know that God, if God is in the equation, God, where there is life, there is hope. Wherever God lives life, he lives hope. He lives hope. He lives hope. So we see what? So, so what do we do? We see fresh mercies and compassions every morning, says Jeremiah. Adam, let me give you some example. Adam and Eve uh, uh, saw that in Genesis 3.15. When God cursed the serpent Satan, God at the same time introduced the twins his grace and mercy. So what? He's, when, that, when God did that, God not only gave Adam and Eve a, 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 a hope, but he gave you and I hope. In Genesis 3, 15, what did he do? God promised a savior who came as Jesus the Christ. Look, look at it. Even in the severity of his judgment and, and in his no-nonsense correction of Adam and Eve, God still demonstrated his compassion because his compassion failed not. So Genesis 3.15 is the hope verse. Always remember that. Genesis 3.15, when you loosen hope, go back to Genesis 3.15 and see what God promised. It is the proto-evangelium, the, the first gospel. And all this, all that I'm talking about are recorded in the Bible. Huh? And Jesus fulfilled Genesis 3.15, that prophecy. And that's why we have, that's why when we look back, we've accepted Jesus and his word, the Bible. But you want to record it now. Get ready. Because from our human perspective, listen carefully, from our human perspective, do you see how long we had to wait for Jesus' virgin birth arrival on earth? From our human perspective, it took 4,000 years, according, you know, for us. But you know what the Bible says, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day in God's side, right? 
But it took 4,000 years for Jesus Christ to fulfill the Genesis 3.15 prophecy. So look at, look at it. Hope is about waiting. And God has a waiting room for his children. And I found out that a good part of our lives are spent in God's waiting room. Now you want to write, you want to write, write this down. We're waiting for God's direction. We're waiting for God's leadership. We're waiting for God's help. We're waiting for God's grace and mercy even in the challenging situations and needs of our life. We're waiting on God's promises. We're waiting for God's return, which is very soon. So, can I ask you a few questions this morning? Do you have hope in your heart that God's, God is working all things together for your good and for his glory? That is the question that you, you want to answer, I want to answer too. Are your circumstances causing you to doubt that God cares for you? That he fights for you and will come surely through for you in whatever ways he knows is best for you? Set your heart. Do you, do you, like I said, God has a waiting room. And that's where we spend most of our, life, of our living life, in God's waiting room. We can't rush God. We can't, I mean, walking with God is, is not a, a microwave pop kind of lifestyle. No, we wait on God because he's the creator. He knows what's best for you and for me. See? And so back in Lamentation 3.21, this was one of the things that Jeremiah remembered. He said, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. See that? He recalled. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not concealed. Because his compassions did not fail. They knew every morning, if great is your faithfulness. You see, you want, to, you want to write this down now. You see, every morning ends the night. Every morning starts a new day. Every morning gives us new provisions. Every morning potentially leads to new temptation and sins. And yet, every morning gives us a fresh forgiveness. Every morning gives us new favors. Every morning gives us new opportunities for praise and worship. So, when you consider all these and more, then like Jeremiah, you can sing a, the great thing that we sang before. Great is thy faithfulness. Every morning, something new for us. You can sing the hymn with a renewed commitment and understanding that great is God's faithfulness. It doesn't matter where you live. You live in Canada, you live in uh, Grenada, you live in uh, China or Japan or Britain or France, or where, Ghana, Nigeria, wherever you live. It doesn't matter at all. God's faithfulness is great. And like, Jer and like Jeremiah, you can worship God personally and you can address him directly. Great is your faithfulness. That's what he said. That's what Jeremiah did. He made it personal. And so I'm asking you, I'm telling you this morning, make it personal. When you pray, when you, when, when you worship, when you praise God, say, great is your faithfulness. Direct. Make it direct. Make it direct because you know what God has done for you. See that? See, in the process of remembering what God had done, remembering God's, attribu uh, 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 God's attributes, uh, Jeremiah the prophet started worshiping God. And you and I, we ought to be worshiping God. We ought to be in the frame of mind of worshiping God. Jeremiah was drawn back into living praise, fellowship, and intimate communion with this faithful God. He saw that. And that's why I said we look back and we recognize that what God has said, he has performed. And, and, and we stand on that and we build upon that. And remember that all this was spared on by what well, his country's woes, the problems that uh, his country was going through. So let me let, let me shift and talk about Canada a little bit. The book of Lamentations is about the miseries of Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah is articulating the pain experienced in the collapse of Judah and Jerusalem. You see, you see what I said? Babylon had invaded the place because it got to a time when God said, you know what? I'm going to judge you, Judah. I'm going to judge you, Jerusalem. And so God allowed the Babylonians to invade the place and take the people captive. And so Jeremiah bitterly bewailed the prevailing deplorable condition. And this was even more aggravated, it went, you know, by comparing it with the, the, the previous status of Judah when, when, when they were prosperous. 
But because of sin, because they, they were departing from God, now God, now things were getting worse. Things were getting bad. And we see that today. In the, it, it doesn't matter what country you live in today. Things are getting worse and worse. Go across, uh, go across, the, uh, across the continent of the motherland. Go to South, uh, South America. Go to the Caribbean. Right here in North America. I mean, look at it. God is coming. That's why. God is coming. Jeremiah and other prophets preached and preached and warned and warned and announced the coming Babylonian invasion as the judgment of God. And yet the people remained wicked and stubborn and refused to turn to God. The, isn't that what we're seeing today? That people are refusing. Matter of fact, today we see people rejecting God. Today, challenging God. Today, uh, uh, measuring uh, uh, God by their standards. Today. So the people remain wicked. They deserve judgment. They deserve death. But look at what Jeremiah said. And, and so as the nation goes, so does its people. And so when we look at our nations, we cannot pretend that all's oh, well. We can't do that. For example, Canada, you know, like I said, Canada is celebrating its 157th uh, anniversary. As Canadians from coast to coast to coast celebrate the country's 157th birthday this weekend, you may have said or heard other Christians say that our nation is in serious moral decline. I say that. I know a, a, a lot of people are saying that too. Because what well, you have something to compare with the past. We say so because Canada was what? Canada was founded on Judeo-Christian values, principles, morals, in you see that? So, although many or most most Canadians uh, were not Christian, nor were they committed to Christ, people tended to be supportive of the existence of God of the Holy Bible, God's design of and for marriage, God's design for children, God's design for morality, God's care, God's honesty, frugality, and, and people had a reverence for the truths of the Bible. Even though they may, they may not be Christian in the past. You see that? And we can even go as far as attributing Canada's prosperity and, and respect around the world to what? To its Judeo Christian beliefs. Of course, uh, Canada has uh, uh, some, some uh, you know, uh, some bones in this, uh, in this secret closet. But in general, in general, Canada was founded upon Judeo Christian principles. Many admit that Canada is facing more crisis, that it is a dysfunctional, chaotic mess under an insurmountable uh, moral confusion. And to be direct, there's no hope, and it's uh, affecting everybody just like it was in Jeremiah's time. Corruption is all over the place in Canada. Corruption is all over the place. Those of you who've lived here for some time, you can compare today to yesterday or to the day before, and you know what I'm talking about. You see that? Just like in Jeremiah's time. In the preaching, in the, you know, now, the, now in Canada, North America, they're trying to persecute believers, Christians. So here in Lamentations of the Three, Jeremiah began to write as the voice of an individual. And you also want to do the same thing. Look at it, because what's happening across the board it touches you and touches me as individuals and our families. You see? Jeremiah and other prophets and other God-fearing people uh, in his time, they have seen the affliction and they knew that it was the result of people spurning God with any, you know, with an anything attitude that goes. You know, people have banished uh, the gap between right and wrong so that now you don't know what is right, you don't, you don't know what is wrong. You know, uh, uh, people have uh, distanced uh, uh, the feeling, people have Taking on the feeling that morality is, is, is dispensable. You know, there's a, a redefining of morality to suit one's own self. You know, self indulgence. So we are the paragon. We are the, 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 human, the human being, the individual is the, is the measure of everything. I mean, I mean, look at it. How can we be the measure of everything? We push God away. 
And so all of this can be summarized as the rejection of God by so many people in our society today. So Jeremiah, at the same time, that time, Jeremiah wrote lamentations. He was lamenting the plight of his people, the loss of hope that was trickling down to everybody individually. And it's happened to us today. It's happened to us today. When, when our politicians are not making the right decisions and, you know, are, are abandoning God, you feel it, I feel it. You feel it, I feel it. Because what? Because now they can't think right. right. They can't think properly because they don't know right from wrong. Huh? And so any policies, any legislation that goes out, that's what, that's what comes out. Nonsense. Nonsense. And it, it, it touches you, it touches me, it touches our families. But Lamentations 3.21 is one of the things Jeremiah remembered. And he said, this I remember, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. And this morning, I'm here to remind you that no matter, like I said, the circumstances, no matter what we're going through, uh, remember what, what Jeremiah wrote. Therefore, have I hope. And what did he recall? Again, back to our verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not concealed. Because his compassions fail not. And then he asks, very new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Heavenly Father. That's what he's saying. And then look at it in verse 24. What did he say? The Lord is my portion. Save my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Therefore will I hope in him. You see, this is the language of, uh, of, of a satisfied soul. He's satisfied with the understanding and the acknowledgement and, and the testimony that he saw in God. So he's satisfied. Jeremiah had no other place of satisfaction than God. So his attitude was gratitude. For the portion he received. And the portion that he received. The portion that he received is what? The portion that he received was the Lord God himself. And so this morning let me ask you again. What is the portion that you're looking for? What is the portion that you're looking for? What is the portion that you're looking for this day? No way could God really be his hope until God was first his portion. And here I'm telling you this morning, you can't, you, 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 you see, God can never be your hope until you make God your portion. And so Jeremiah made God his portion. That is why he had hope for the future. So this morning, again, like I said, no matter what you're going through, the ups and downs of life, the highways and byways of life, the difficulties, the challenges that you're going through, remember this. Remember that you ought to make God your portion. When you make God your portion, life becomes its work because you look back and you see that morning by morning, new mercies you see and you, and you are going to worship and praise him and say, oh, Father, great is your faithfulness. So, as we end now, what are we to set our hope on? What are we to set our hope on? On politicians? On wealth? On family? On our job? On the country in which we live? You know, we don't want to talk about some places. The corruption is so rife. The corruption, the corruption is so deep. The corruption is so steep that almost everybody is doing whatever they want to do. But as we look forward, July 1st and July 4th, Canada and the United States celebrate their independence, what we call their independence day. As we go for what, do you, what are you setting your hope on? We don't set our hope on, on our jobs, on our council, on politicians, on wealth, on family. No, we set our hope on God and on Christ's second coming. So we look back, we see what God has done, we see today what God is doing, and we look forward to Jesus Christ reappearing. So look at what it says. That's what we've seen in this series on hope. And that's what we've seen right here. Lamentations 3.24, the Lord is my portion, save my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. 
It was hope for the future that guided uh, the Apostle Paul. You know what we call it before in the, in, in, in the beginning, Philippians 3, 13, 14, 6, what? Forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I press toward the mark for the pride or the high call of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But look at it. While you wait, maybe you, you've been praying for something. You pray something before God. Listen carefully to what I'm going to say now. While you wait, while we wait, and while Titus, Titus chapter 2, 13 says what? While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Huh? While we wait, let me encourage you. Let me remind you that God is working more than any of us can see or comprehend right now. You want me to say that again? I'm going to say that again because it's important. It is important that while you wait, while we wait for Jesus Christ's return, while we wait for God to move in our individual lives each day, every morning, new mornings that we see, while we wait and wait and wait, huh? remember this, I want to encourage you that God is working more than any of us can see or understand or are aware of right now. He's got our best interest in his mind and his heart. Huh? Because we know Romans 8, what? Romans 8, 28 says what? All things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are called according to what? His purpose. So we know that the love of God is with us while we wait. We're waiting for a reason. And that is why 1 Peter 3, 15 says what? But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everybody who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. That you have. We understand the issues that we go through every day. We understand the issues that we go through every now and then. But remember what Jeremiah said, huh? What Jeremiah said in the beginning. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Great is your faithfulness because your compassions fail not. So Romans, and, and I'm, I'm ending now. Romans 5, 3 says what? Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance character and character hope. That's what the Bible says. Romans 5, 3. So as we bring our series on hope to our end today, as we bring our series on hope by looking at our country, the country in which we live, let us remember what Jeremiah said. Let us remember what Jeremiah said. Morning by morning, new messages we see. Your compassions, they do not fail. Great is your faithfulness. Do, do I have an amen here? We all know that God is God is faithful, and so as we think about it, as we as we as we bring the uh, the sermon to an end, remember, great is God's faithfulness. He, he was faithful to you. He's faithful to me, and as we pray for our country, country of origin or adopted country. Let us remember that we look forward to God. He's the object of our hope. Shall we please pray? Hallelujah. What a mighty God that we serve. What a mighty God that we serve. A God who's faithful. New morning, every morning we see new mercies waking us up. Taking us through the day. Being there for us. Mighty God, we can't thank you enough. Sometimes we know we are ungrateful. So please forgive us for that. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, so that we can be grateful. So that we can be sincere. So we can, like Jeremiah did, worship you directly and say, Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You are my portion. And my hope is in you. You heard me this morning. And maybe you're not born again. If you're not born again. Here's your opportunity. 
to give your life to Christ so that you can say God is your portion. So that we, you can thank God. Even though, you know, you, yeah, so you can thank God meaningfully for waking you up in the morning for the new mercies that you see. It's very easy. A short prayer with me will make you a Christian. Pray this prayer with me. Dear God, recognize that I'm a sinner. I want to make you my portion. I understand that your faithfulness is great. Please receive me as a part of your family. I give my life to Jesus Christ. I believe that he came and died for me. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. If you pray this prayer, we'd love to hear from you, right? I'd love to hear from you. We'll show you how to grow in the Lord. You know, and uh, on the other hand, you are a believer and you're faced with some challenges, seems some difficulties, you want to move on in life, and life seems to be at a standstill. Don't budge, don't waver. We are always in God's waiting room. You know, when you go to the hospital, there's a waiting room before you get to see the doctor. Same thing. Same thing. We're in God's, uh, God, we, you know, we, we're always in God's waiting room because he knows what he's planned for each other. So let us rejoice, praise him, and worship him for his faithfulness. All right? So be encouraged. And again, I take the opportunity to say a happy Canada Day to, uh, and, uh, to, to, to our Canadians and also uh, those who are listening to us, to Americans. Shall so please receive the benediction. Shall receive the benediction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We grow strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We don't give up. Hallelujah. Cause me to bear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.